you got an A90 Supra like this, I'm gonna tell you the steps that you can do to get a lot more power out of this B58 engine. There's a big caveat though, if you've got a vehicle that was built after about June 2020, it's gonna be very expensive to get a lot more power out of it. No! But I'll talk about that in a second. So to get a bunch of power out of this, roughly 100 horsepower, all you need is a tune. And if that's all that you want, no other modifications, you're good to go. You can do that pretty inexpensively. And there's basically two tines, kinds of tunes. There is a piggyback tune and there's a flash tune. There's a difference. A piggyback tune is a hardware device that sits in your wiring harness. You're gonna plug it in. You're gonna use something like your phone or maybe a cable to control the tune. You might have a couple tunes to select from and that's pretty much it. It's gonna cost you anywhere from about five to $700 depending. And with a tune like that, you're gonna see somewhere between 80 to maybe 100 horsepower and about the same amount of torque. It's gonna to depend if you have a 2020 or a 2021 Supra. Now, if your Supra is built after about June 2020, you might just wanna call it a day with the flash tune because the ECU is encrypted after that date. And so far, no one has actually cracked the encryption and made it available for sale to the public. I'll talk specifically about that in just a second. If you want to get more power, you're gonna to have to go with something called a flash tune. And one of the most common ones, the most versatile one, is something called Ecutech. It is a hardware device that you're gonna purchase either from Ecutech or your tuner. And then they're going to give you a tune that you can load onto the vehicle. Sometimes you're gonna have a couple different levels and you're gonna be able to adjust the, the tune with your phone. Now, even if your car is built prior to June of 2020, you're still gonna have to have the ECU unlocked. So the total cost of a tune like this, and this video is not sponsored by anyone, I'm not paid to make this video, it's gonna cost you anywhere from about $1,500 to $1,800, including the unlock service. Now there's of course different kinds of tunes that you can get and there are different tuners. And believe it or not, a catback exhaust is actually going to give you more horsepower than the stock exhaust does. Even though the stock exhaust flows pretty well, there's gains to be made. Personally, I'm using a Borla exhaust. <laughs> Like it and putting that on gained about 20 horsepower or so, which is pretty impressive. I'm not a tuner, I don't run a shop. I'm just telling you from my owner's perspective what works and can probably tell you what doesn't work. So your total cost to get a lot more power basically going to be your tune and unlock, your catback exhaust, and potentially a downpipe. We're looking at somewhere in the range of maybe $3,000, $4,000 tops. So your costs here are going to include the tune, the Ecutech license, the unlock. That's gonna be anywhere from, like I said, $1,500 to maybe $1,800, $2,000, depending on how much customization you want and what kind of tune that you want. Then a catback exhaust is gonna be anywhere from about I think about $1,000 to $3,000, depending on what you wanna do. Add in a downpipe if you want, you're looking at maybe $3,500 on the low end to get about 500 horsepower. Let me show you the numbers that I got on my 2020 Supra, which has the two port exhaust manifold. <laughs> As I explained in my Z tuning video, I'll put a link to that below. Not everything is about the maximum horsepower and maximum torque. That's actually one of the less important things. But what I wanted to show you is first we ran a baseline on my vehicle and we got around 327 horsepower and around 380 pound feet of torque. So after we ran that baseline map, and this is all in 91, we loaded up or created a second tune, an intermediate level tune, and that resulted in quite a bit more power and torque. We went from 380 torque to 415 and 327 horsepower to 382 horsepower. This is all just a 91. So we got 453 pound-feet of torque and 386 horsepower. It's an increase of about 72 torques and about 59 horsepower. And 
it's not just the peak number that matters, it's sort of the area under the curve like I talked about in that Nissan Z video recently. It's how the power is delivered that matters. And what we're looking at here are the pink lines on the dynograph. Those represent the, the poles that we just did. And by the way, this video was actually created over a year ago, so this is one of the earlier Supra tuning situations. We are gonna do three separate tunes for 91. We're gonna do a stock tune, which just is, replicates stock power and torque. We're doing a middle one, and then we're doing a higher level tune. And so we're gonna see exactly what kind of numbers that we can get with that. So those are gonna be all switchable tunes. Still running a 91 with a little bit more tuning, we're able to get 417 pound-feet of torque and about 400 horsepower. Not bad for a 2020 running on pump gas. Then he created the final map for 91 octane gas and that was resulting in about 472 to 488 pound-feet of torque and about 397 to 411 horsepower. So. I think this is really impressive for 91. Finally, we did a tune for E50. So that's a combination of E85, which you can get at the pump, and also 91 octane gasoline. You mix them together and you get about a 50-50 mixture of ethanol and gasoline. And that gives you a lot of knock resistance. And with that mix, we're able to get about 600 pound-feet of torque at the peak, uh, continuous around 530 or so. and almost 500 horsepower so that's a lot of power for a light little car like this that weighs a little over 3300 pounds really quite quite fast and quite impressive and a lot of fun too if you have a supra that is built after about june of 2020 it's gonna be very expensive to get this power out of it and that is because the ecu is encrypted and it may or may not have been cracked at this point so here's the situation on the ecu so if you don't know the Supra uses a Bosch ECU, which is very common in the industry. And after a build date of roughly June 2020, Bosch changed the ECU to be one that is fully encrypted. And that means that the previous technology used to essentially hack the ECU and modify the programming to give you more boost and more spark advance and all that stuff that makes more power, that was no longer available to tuners. So almost exactly a year ago, this post appears on Vimmer Post and it's a company called Mission Performance. And essentially what they're saying here is that they are gonna be able to unlock the ECU. But if you go to their website right now, it says they are in private beta testing. Once properly tested and finalized, flashing solution will be available to the general public. Stay tuned. So don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not calling them out. These things are very difficult to do and they take a lot of time. But the state right now is that as far as I know, the ECU has still not been cracked, but there are a couple of options. And now this is the part that I promise is gonna be incredibly expensive. So there is a company in the US that will take your ECU, they will send it off to their vendor in Europe. The vendor is going to do a readout on that. They're gonna send the data and your ECU back to the US. The company is then going to take that data and they're gonna clone it onto a pre locked ECU. In other words, one that's unlocked, they're gonna give you two ECUs back and that's many thousands of dollars, and then you have to pay for the tune on top of it. So we're talking mid five figures to get all this stuff done. It's not cheap. But Eric, I just bought the new Nissan Z, and so the car is cheaper, so it should be cheaper to make the same amount of power, right? Well, I just went on to Reddit. And if you don't know, Q50 Red Sport has the same engine as the new Z. It's the VR30 DDTT, it's a three liter. And so I found this user who posted a dynograph. And you can see that he's making about 506 pound-feet of torque, very flat across the top of the curve, looks really nice. And he's making about 428 horsepower. So what did it cost him to make this power? And this is just my best guess. Feel free to correct me down in the comments if you think I'm way off base because I'm not an expert on the VR30. This is strictly what I found online. Somebody asked him what he did to get this power and he says, yeah, buddy, AMS lower down pipes, fast and tension resonated cat back exhaust with 10 inch sport mufflers, AMS heat exchanger upgrade, and then dyno tuned at AMS. This is just my quick research online. I figure exhaust is gonna be 1500 to 2000. 
450 for downpipes, about a thousand bucks for the heat exchanger, and the tune per AMS is going to be anywhere from $600 to $2,500. The total cost, by my estimation, is going to be anywhere from about $3,600 to $6,000, probably before labor for installation. So. Yeah, you're gonna spend a little bit more money or probably quite a bit more money to get about the same power or a little bit less than you're gonna get out of the B58. That's just kind of the way it is. I'm super stoked that Nissan actually released the Z. It's great to have another inexpensive sports car in the world. It helps the whole sports car community build up and get something that's more affordable. Also the GR Corolla, and I know there's gonna be dealer markups, but that's the way it is right now. I've got another video on inexpensive sports cars right over here. I recommend you click it. My name is Eric, thanks for watching.